Welcome back to Is It Still Good, the channel where we watch older films and let you know if they still hold up. Today, we're going to watch a movie I had very fond memories of, but upon a rewatch, my reaction may surprise you. So stick around and we'll answer the question, should you watch this film? And if you've seen Empire Records in the past, take a walk down memory lane with me. Join me in the comments, further the discussion, and let's get to the bottom of whether or not these movies should be preserved or buried by the sands of time, right? So we'll get into it first. Let's try to sell some books. Okay, hopefully we sold some books and we're gonna talk about Empire Records, PG-13. It's a drama comedy. It doesn't know which it wants to be, by the way. That's one of my, spoiler, that's one of my critiques about the film. It can't pick a tone, drama or comedy. But it was made in 1995, stars Liv Tyler, Renee Zellweger, and that burnout kid from Dazed and Confused I didn't like in that movie. I like him more in this one, I don't know his name, but it had a budget of 10 mil, and it only made 300K in the box office, so big stinker. But it's gone on to be somewhat of a cult classic, I guess. Would you call Empire Records a cult classic? Let me know in the comments. I don't think so. It's a cult something. People still watch it, but I don't know if it's a cult classic. I don't know if I would categorize it that way. So basically, this was written by Carol Heikenainen, and she got paid a boatload of money for this. I don't know how she got this kind of deal, but maybe I shouldn't even say how much she got paid. But it's, it's a lot for a writer. I'm really jealous, and it's not like great writing in this either. I could have knocked this script out in like a week maybe two. The amount of money she got set her up for life, I'll tell you that. But this is from her experiences working at Tower Records, and this just kind of goes to show, guys, that if you're a creator or writer, you got to draw from your experiences, and I think that's what makes this film watchable, is uh, it's got an air of truth to it. It's a bit raw and authentic in that way, so you can kind of tell it came from somebody who knew the industry, who knew the music business as it was failing. She worked for Tower Records. Uh, this is called Empire Records, obviously got to change the name, but basically the burnout dude from Dazed and Confused, his character finds out they're going to get bought out by a corporate chain and to save what he loves is his uh, record store that he works at. He takes the night's drop and brings it to uh, Vegas to where he's trying to double and triple the money to save Empire Records. And he gets caught. He loses everything, gets caught. In real life, the guy actually stole money, I guess, uh, according to Carol, but wasn't to save the store. He just ended up bringing it back and she was touched by the sediment. He wasn't arrested or anything either, so same thing in this movie. But that's the whole plot. There's like five or six people, somebody stole money, that's the whole plot. That's it, that's the whole story. It's kind of like Dazed and Confused. You're not gonna get any cathartic lesson out of this. You're not going to... I don't know. I mean, it kind of falls flat in almost every way. We're gonna get to my overall take. This is gonna be a wham-bammer. My analytics tell me you guys don't watch past like four minutes anyway, so five minute reviews, here we go. I do remember this movie fondly, but when I watched it again, the first 45 minutes annoyed the crap out of me. It's kind of like when you don't have kids and you can't stand that kid energy, or if you're a cat person and somebody's dog is jumping around you. That's how I felt about Empire Records. You're gonna feel the same way if you're old and jaded like I am. But I really liked this movie when I was younger and I figured it out. It was Liv Tyler, man. I had a big crush on Liv Tyler. I wish we would have met when we were younger. I think we would have hit it off because I've always felt bad for Liv Tyler. There was always like a kindred spirit there. I felt that she was objectified a little too young, kind of like Christina Applegate in that way. But I could never tell if she was like the prettiest girl I've ever seen or like really weird looking. <laughs> Isn't that the way with like some of those like supermodel types? Like they turn and they're weird looking. They turn again and they're the prettiest person you've ever seen in your life. Eh, that's models, I guess. But I do feel bad for Liv Tyler in a lot of ways, and she does get to spaz out in this movie, and I bet you a lot of that was felt. I bet you a lot of that came from her gut. You know, she's been kind of kicked around a lot in Hollywood. I'm glad they brought up suicide stuff in this with the character Deb. I dated a Deb in high school. It was exhausting, but this Deb, the actress, is even more annoying, in my opinion. Can't stand her. And they do like a mock funeral for her, which I think could be really helpful to suicidal folks. That's kind of my wheelhouse. And I think they would benefit from hearing their own eulogies. I got to write my own in my second book if you ever read it, but they don't even stick to that. Like even when it gets serious, they just jump off topic as soon as it's getting good when the girls flip out or yell at each other. That's really the most interesting parts of this film, I think. Uh, a little weird with like Liv Tyler's obsession with Rex Manning and then she wants to hook up with him. So he just kind of pulls it out and she runs away. I like how they showed that because I'm willing to bet that's happened to Liv Tyler in real life several times in Hollywood. The acting is really, really rough. 
I feel like a jerk for not liking this movie. I mean, I do remember liking it when I was younger, but I don't really like it now. They just get to the end and they have a party and it saves the place. And it's just really kind of like tied up neatly quickly. You know, very little consequence in this. I don't know. This movie's kind of everything I hate about like modern coffee shops and stuff. Like everybody's acting like they're in Empire Records. You're not, nobody cares, nobody cares. But yeah, I mean, Liv Tyler at the time was like such an exotic beauty. And when we were kids, I was so smitten with her. And Renee Zellweger is also in the film. <laughs> but yeah, guys, that's it for me. I'm going to give it a number score. It's almost a coin flip with the exception of it's slightly watchable. I remember like in this rewatch, I started liking it more in the third act when people started yelling at each other and it got a little more real. And they dropped like the fourth wall. Like the characters keep looking at you and I don't like that at all. I can't stand that. This movie kind of reminded me of what a chump I was when I was a kid. <laughs> so yeah, if you have that about you, if you really like this movie when you're young, watch it again. Tell me if it holds up. I doubt it. So I'm going to give this a 5.5 out of 10. And I think that 0. 0.5 is pretty generous. That 0. 0.5, this is a coin flip. This should have been 5 out of 10. It's 5.5 out of 10 because they're trying to show how important music is to people. They're trying to cover topics like suicide and, you know, addiction and being objectified and all this other stuff, the music industry. I think the mission was noble. The execution really sucked. And it has Lib Tyler. Should you watch Empire Records? Flip a coin, man. If it's tails, don't. That's it. Final answer. I'll see you guys next time on Is It Still Good?